Hello, I want to talk about sharpening and sharpening has changed over the years and one of my small frustrations at the moment is some people out there, maybe not online, but some people out there are still teaching methods that they might have learnt back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, We've got diamond stones, we've got water stones, we've got stones that keep stones flat, we've got all sorts going on now that makes our lives so much easier than 40, 50, 60 years ago. So much easier. The, the bar has been raised, seriously raised. Right, I want to show you this. Ignore that picture of me behind me. I want to show you this. There you go. That's how pretty good this chisel is. But right in the top corner just under my eye see that corner look how good the mirror is on all of the rest of it you can see around my workshop look at that that's a lead hanging down but look at that top corner the reason that isn't flat yet is because somebody back in the 80s used it on an oil stone that had got a dip in it we can't do that anymore there is no point in using a stone that isn't flat. There is no point at all. The bar has been raised over the last 50, 60 years. We can do flat. Joe, Blogs, Fred in the shed, we can make chisels flat. Right, so let me show you this. So this chisel was in a right old state, and I mean seriously bad. I've spent, by hand, on there, and thank you to Gary as well. Gary's lent me his stone, which was a bit sharper than mine. Um, I've spent about four hours on this chisel, getting it flat. And some of you would say, oh, do it on a Tormek, do this and do that. Look, you get out what you put in. I want this chisel to be perfectly flat. So to get that, I mean, it's struggling a bit now. To get the, rid of that corner, all of that polished back has got to go again. And I thought, me, here we go, I was good enough to get that back. And that little corner, I thought, oh, I'll get it through the next grit. The next grit will get it. The next grit will get it. And it just hasn't. It's still there, that little corner. And that is because, I'll show you exactly why it happened. The reason it happened was because, imagine their stone there going like that. This guy... Look at the wear on this side and then at that tip. This guy put it like that. He went down and up with his stone. And what that did was it took that corner off and damaged all down here. I'm telling you now, this is a hundred times better than it was. But it's still not good enough. So even though I've got it polished and beautiful and looking great, it's got to go back on the 300 grit stone. I've got to get rid of that nasty corner. It's got to go. The back of this chisel needs to be flat. The idea of a sharp edge is two, two beautifully flat surfaces coming together will create one nice sharp edge. At the moment, it's not going to work as good. Anywhere near as good. Don't get me wrong, it's sharp. It's brilliantly sharp. I've even honed it a little and squared the end off and it's looking pretty good. But, you've got to go back to the coarse stone and I've got to get that flat. So that's what I'm going to do now. Get it flat. So here we go. Polished back, looking good, but still not right. That's the time. 300 grit stone. Bit of water. Let's go. I change the angles. I All the weight is on there. This hand's just moving around. All the weight is on that front, that part, and it stays more or less in the middle of the stone. And that's it. Let's get that back flat. I'll come back to you in a bit. Periodically turn the stone around. And carry on.
making sure when you do it this way that that this doesn't ride up over that and lift it up at an angle if that happens it's it's going to ruin everything so it's just controlling it up to that point I even put my hand in there on there and put an awful lot of weight on it to try keep it flat but to try and get more cutting going on have a quick look see what's going on right see it there's still that bit on the corner there that corner's going actually that's a better light isn't it you can see exactly what's going on now top corner up there bottom corner down here keep on going okay so it's improving but what I just thought about was if I put a square on there how's it actually doing if I just touch the blade up against the metal you can see through where my finger is so some needs to come off this side that will help get rid of that so what I've started doing is I've started sharpening it to get rid of that corner to make it square so let's crack on with that yep time's still going right I want to show you this and this is a little tool I help use to help students sometimes which is a 25 degree bevel which means you can put that on there which means you can actually set up where you're holding the chisel you can hold the chisel there muscle memory going on you can keep that close at hand move it out the way hold it at that angle that's it rock your body lock your arms push with your toe, I don't know whether you can see, you can't see my toe okay I'm pushing back with my forward toe locking the top part of my body and shoulders and wrists and putting quite a bit of pressure on that bevel and I can stop and I can slide that back under and I was just taking a little bit higher that's okay a little bit higher is alright a little bit lower is alright doesn't have to be perfectly 25 if it is, great. If you can do it easy, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. Alright, let's stop and have a look. Got a couple of bevels going on now, but... How's that corner doing? Okay, so there's a bit of a gap there still. See where my finger is behind? Where's my phone gone off? Still need to take more off this side. On this side, focus on this side. Set it up. Put some weight on it. Hanging my hand off this side. side nearest the camera oh. if you've got arthritis this hurts there's a serious burr on the back now it's huge. Let's flatten the back off a bit more and I'll come back to you.
Right, so when, when I'm sharpening the chisel, I'm not holding it like that, square to the end. Because that only gives you that much room. By holding it at an angle, like the Japanese do, it gives you twice, twice as much room, twice as much of a flat surface. So I can pull that up there, see the water come out the front, know that I've got the angle, and get on with sharpening it. And this isn't normal for me to put this much effort into a chisel. This is correcting a damaged chisel. And also trying to get the bevel to square, but also to get the um, to get that back down. So look, that's what I've just done, which is that bevel down here. It's looking pretty good. Got a nice, reasonably flat on there, and it's it's absolutely. Spot on. If I put it over there, you can see through. If I put it that way around and close the gap, you can't see the white of the clock behind. So that's square. So that's good. So that's it. Uh, except for still, I've still got that corner to do. See that? Here you go. Right in the centre of the picture. That corner. That one's not too bad, but the other one still needs a bit more. Right, I just want to show you this because that looks like I've already done the secondary bevel on there, the, the 25 degrees, but I haven't. And those grind marks go straight the way through that. So I'm actually wondering whether this is laminated. And I'm finding that in, in over, putting it over the stone, these sides are getting very sharp. Um, I'm still not there. I've spent a bit more time on it and it's still not there. So I'm just going to try something else. So I'm just going to quickly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in the strop, quickly strop it and then bring it back and show you. If it strops equally, then it's all the same steel. If that bit there shines quicker than this, then it's laminated. So I'm just going to do that now and we'll come back to you in a sec. It's still, it's polishing up pretty similar. So it must be a slight bevel on the end. That's okay. Right, carry on. Okay, so look, I'm down to the last tiny little bit. And if I just angle it like that, you can see that corner there. I know it's not in focus. But you can see, and there's a little bit on this corner. There you go. Is that small enough to go to a thousand and then it might go... Well, the good thing is the bevel's square now and the bevel's getting closer. So it wouldn't take much wear to actually get onto flat. So I'm going to give up with the 300 now. That's it. I'm going to turn it over, put the 1,000 on it and start flattening the back on 1,000. So it's Guess the tune. Right, back on here. So what I've just been doing is 1,000 grits on there, doing a good job. Um, and I'm just finishing. I'm just finishing. Do you want to just be a bit better? I want you to see the time. I want you to see that this isn't a five-minute job. Um, I'm just finishing by doing that. So again, making sure I don't touch there. I've told you before. Lots of pressure. So this is a good thousand grit and it's cutting really nicely and you know the fact that I was bothered about the corner. Let me show you. If we look now, oh you can just see it, I, yeah I can just see it's tiny bit on that corner. I'm not so worried now. I'm not so worried now. Look at that, it's straight. Compared to when I started this video, that's great. Bit longer on here then, not much longer though. 
not much longer. I'll do change the um, the way I'm sharpening it again. Sometimes I do clockwise, sometimes I do anti-clockwise. Feels like there's a good bit of cutting going on down the bottom here. Feels really quite grippy. Don't know whether it's that little bit of rust that's on there, but. Wow, a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure. I mean, look. Right, I'm going to finish by going this way. And then the next time you see me, I'm going to have a 3,000 stone over there in this thing. And then we'll do a bit more. So I'll see you in a bit.